Okay, so in this video, I want to look at creating water planes for large maps. This is anything above standard size. Uh, in a previous video that I did a long time ago, um, I showed how to export the actual terrain from the Giants editor and then import that into Blender and use said terrain to actually then create the water plane uh, using the terrain as a, a reference. Um, now, if you have a really powerful machine, uh, you know, PC, you might be able to export the terrain out if it's a 4x, 16x, or even 64x, whatever, I don't know, but definitely not on my system. Um, <clears throat> I tried it, and it literally brought my system to a grinding halt for at least an hour, and I gave up. <laughs> so, um, but I <clears throat> kind of thought about it afterwards. I don't really need to do that, because at the end of the day, this terrain is actually deformed by using a height map. So, we already have a height map. Now I've copied it to my desktop just to make it easier to find because I have this particular map on my eDrive. But if you actually go into whatever map you are working on in the actual maps folder, um, I think it's this one, data, you have your map DEM. Now that's obviously what the game uses to then, you know, terraform or deform or whatever else the terrain of the, you know, the map. So uh, using this particular texture within Blender, I can then, you know, reproduce this in Blender without having to export the terrain from the giant editor. Now, it's not going to match exactly, um, and that's because of the lo level of subdivisions. If we actually click on the terrain here, you can see this has 3,458,000, I don't even know if that's, that's 34,586,624 triangles which i'm never going to be able to reproduce that in um blender not in a million years so <clears throat> and i don't even know if that's the right number but anyway it's a lot let's just say that okay so <clears throat> um i'm not yeah there's no point in me trying to do that because it just i'm not going to be able to reproduce that in in blender not on my system you possibly might be able to do it on if you have, again if you have a really powerful system but uh, um <clears throat> so what i'm going to do instead is use blender to kind of get a close representation of the map within Blender, uh, you know, again as a reference, so that I can then create my create the water plane that I want to want to do. So um, <clears throat> I'll leave that open. Hopefully, it won't slow my system down too much. Uh, so within Blender here, I'm just going to first of all, I'm going to turn on some screencast keys, so you can see what I'm pressing. <clears throat> so. What I would say is to create a plane. So uh, I've got a lot of add-ons, so I'm going to try to do this as vanilla as possible for everybody to follow along. So just go add mesh plane. Now this is uh, just a two by two, um, if we go to here, two meters by two meters. I want to make this a little bit bigger. Uh, you know, there's no point. I could potentially make it like really big, but I found that, and again, this might be because of my system. Um, it might work better if you have a more powerful system, but if I scale this up to a really large flat plane, the displace modifier no longer works. So in my experience so far, what I would do is just scale it up, you no, know, sort of maybe by tens, so just press S for scale and then type the letter, you know, type 10 on your numpad or keyboard or whatever else. And that will scale it up to 20 by 20 meters. And that's about as far as I would say is, you know, um, where I would go to. Again, that's something you'd have to kind of experiment with and it will all make a difference. Um, <clears throat> so uh, once you've scaled it up, you need to apply the scale because we now have some non-uniform scale on here. So I'm going to go uh, Control A and apply the scale. This will put it all back to 1, 1 and 1. And that's somewhat important when it comes to using modifiers uh, because they will use uh, yeah, they will try kind of like get a bit um, discombobulated if you have non-uniform scaling when you're using modifiers and stuff like that. So I always put this back to one, one and one, and then I know that uh, things are generally going to work better uh, or more accurately. Uh, so we need to subdivide this because the way a displaced modifier works is it requires geometry to, uh, you know, more geometry to displace. So at the moment, all we've got here is four vertices. So, you know, that's not going to be enough. So I'm going to go to edit mode. So I just go object mode to edit mode, right click and go subdivide. And then down here in your little pop up, open that up and just type in here 
100 and that was subdivided by a number of cuts <clears throat> so now we're up to 20,000 triangles but that's again still not quite enough I'm going to go back into object mode come over to the blue wrench here which is a modifier properties and I'm going to use a subdivision surface modifier to basically non-destructively uh, subdivide it even further um, and the reason why I use the modifier is because by subdividing it so if I go back into object mode uh, sorry edit mode and do this way it's destructive it's actually um, <clears throat> applying the subdivision so again it kind of depends on how powerful your system is uh, if you have a really powerful system you could potentially subdivide it again and again and again so you would have all of these uh, subdivisions live on the you know on the actual geometry on the on the mesh but um, I'm using modifiers because these are just kind of I guess kind of procedural is the right word but they're not applied to the mesh they're just being uh, created by blender um, you know but they're not actually you know haven't they haven't actually been applied to the mesh just yet so we want to keep that where it is and I would use simple not Catmull Clark simply because uh, with Catmull Clark it rounds off the edges here now potentially it won't matter too much uh, but um, depending on the you know how uh, your height map is going to you know, affect the geometry uh, Catmull Clark might actually round off edges where you don't want them to be rounded off and things like that so I would just use simple in this case and then go up as high as you can now I can go to about three without my system sort of coming to a grinding halt I can go a bit higher but while I'm recording I think potentially this is about as high as I want to go uh, so I've now got one million uh, just over one million triangles which is obviously again nowhere near what it was um, when we looked at it in uh, in the Giants editor but it should give me enough to work with that's the point so uh, <clears throat> what I'm going to do then is add in another modifier which is the uh, displace modifier so we're going to add that one in and you can see now the the, the plane has jumped up a little bit because it's being um, uh, displaced on against the normals by a strength of one so if I decrease the, the strength it will then go down and whatever else so and the normals being um, basically if I go into backface culling we have the normals on this side but not on this side because it's transparent so um, it's going to basically move it by a strength of one uh, in the direction of the normal so it'll go up if I flip the normals it would go down um, but if I type in here negative one it will just go down against the normal so basically that's all that is so you don't really need to worry about that too much because we're going to change some stuff there anyway uh, so the next thing we want to do is add in a texture uh, our actual map DEM so we're going to go to the texture properties and click new and then click open and I'm going to go to my desktop where I have it stored here so I'm just going to click that click open and you can see currently it's not going to give us what we want because it's just repeating the same displacement all over the whole mesh so we don't want that um, so first of all what I need to do is change a few settings for the texture because at the moment it's being displayed in color space sRGB and we don't want that we want it to be non-color um, and that's quite important because it will make a difference and then the next thing we need to do is go back to the uh, modifiers tab and under the uh, displacement modifier we need to change our coordinates from local to UV it's going to use the UV um, grid, uh, the mapping for how it's going to display everything. Okay, <clears throat> so now we've got this. That should give us a good, clear representation of how <clears throat> everything's going to look as close as it can to you know what we have within the giant editor. So should look similar to this. Again, it's not going to look exactly the same, but it should be you know good enough to get what we want that's the plan anyway now you could again you know if you can go higher subdivisions then do that because that again will make a big difference uh, but uh, for what I need here I think this should be enough uh, it's going to give me what I need okay so once you've got uh, you know where you need to be with all this uh, we need to then use this as our reference to you know create our um, water plane so uh, the way I tend to do this is going to top down view so 7 on the numpad to go into top orthographic if for some reason that doesn't work 
you can come up here and go view viewpoint and then top and you can see the shortcut there numpad 7 so if you don't have a numpad on your keyboard or i have you know people have said that for whatever reason the numpad shortcuts don't work in their version of blender uh, even though here it still shows the shortcut as numpad 7 it just doesn't work you can just use this so view viewpoint and then top and it will do the same and then we're going to basically just kind of trace around the area here to create our water plate so um <clears throat> when you're in top down orthographic here uh middle mouse button and left shift will allow you to pan so uh, left shift middle mouse button and then you can basically pan around like this if you don't hold shift and you just do middle mouse it'll rotate it we don't obviously want that we want to just be panning the uh, view so left shift and middle mouse and you can then pan around so <clears throat> get it to somewhere you know at one of the starting points either this end or the other end or wherever um, and then start creating your vertices now um, there are add-ons that you can uh, which come with blender that you can create single verts but the way i generally do it vanilla wise uh, without add-ons is to create a second plane so i'm just going to do shift a in this case and go mesh plane or you can do it up here add mesh plane whichever you choose <clears throat> and then once you've got your new plane go into edit mode you need to be in vertex select here okay and then press m and merge at center and this will create it will merge all of the vertices right into the center and you'll just be left with one vertex okay so now you can basically move that around so just go g and move it around so you are in edit mode okay <clears throat> so you can just <clears throat> move it around wherever you need to move it to so we're just going to go g and maybe kind of move it to somewhere here that'll do and then you just need to extrude this out and you need to again be in vertex mode to this for this to work so just go e and then drag out and then just click okay so e and drag out then click e drag out and click and so on and so on just keep doing that until you basically get um what you want to kind of get out of it so just kind of keep going around like so And then until you get to the end here and if you misclick or you want to move one of these just click on it g and just move it where you want to move it to once you're happy with it left mouse button click to um you know <clears throat> complete the action complete the move action and then once you've got to you know this side done again we're just going to continue on so just go e and extrude this one down to maybe somewhere like that and then e to extrude and move this one out uh, <clears throat> now what i would recommend is to try and get them as um you know s sort of some sort of symmetry to it so they're opposite to each other just helps with the triangulation of the mesh um in my opinion but there are times when that's not possible don't worry about it just you know kind of do do what needs to be done kind of thing so we're just going to kind of come to here and then you know down to the here I might actually make a couple more here just to kind of uh, make it fit a little better we'll do one there and one there like so again e to extrude move the uh, mouse and then just left mouse button click to uh, complete the move so or the extrusion so when you get down to this end here shift click on the other one and then f to create a new edge basically so what i'm going to do up here because i created uh, let's see an extra one somewhere I believe got that one that one that one that one yeah here 
So what I'm going to do is go into edge mode, select this edge, right click and subdivide. Go back into vertex mode. You can see now I've got an extra vertex that's going to match across this side here, something like that. Just so it makes it nice and clean and uh, should triangulate much better then. And then if you need to move any of these, again, just click it, drag it, <clears throat> you know, G and move it. And then G, you'd move it and just kind of get them where you need them to be. You might might take a couple of attempts, um, you know, to get it exactly right, but uh, uh, it is what it is. Okay, so once we've got it to however we think we need it, I'm going to press A to select them all and then F to fill. Okay, so we now have our start of our water plane. So we go back into object mode and then I'm just going to basically drag it down. So G. Z and just move it into position wherever you want it to be. So, you know, something like that, for example. And then just have a look at it and make sure it all fits where you want it to fit. Now, you may find that you will need to adjust the terrain. You might find that um, the way you've created the terrain doesn't quite um, match in with how the water plane is going to lay, because obviously here we can see this up this end works really well. But as we get around here, things start to get a little bit weird and they're not quite um, you know the, the water level here looks really really low in comparison um, and doesn't kind of you know look right so you might find that you will have to adjust your terrain to make it work better or, or possibly that might be what you want you want to have a big kind of drop off on the edge here you know um, that is again something you would have to decide uh, but obviously the water level here is going to be quite low, but then it is anyway down here, you know, so, uh, you know, in comparison to the terrain sort of thing. So again, you'd have to kind of play around with that a little bit and uh, decide what it is that you want to get out of that. <clears throat> GZ, just move it down a bit further, actually. Just kind of trying to get an idea of where it's going to sit. Yeah, I think perhaps maybe in this particular case, the terrain was will will need a little bit of adjustment to make this fit really well. But uh, you know that's fine. It is what it is. And again, here you can always go back and adjust it if you need to. So go seven on numpad, go into top down orthographic, go into uh, X ray mode here. Possibly um, you might need to actually go. Let's do into. Uh, instead of x-ray mode, uh, sorry, not in, in not wireframe, but x-ray mode. And that will give you a bit better um, kind of look at it. So you might need to then go back into uh, edit mode, vertex select, and then move some stuff around a little bit here. So you, you know, might need to uh, kind of move this one. And then sometimes, again, you might need to check, click on an, uh, an edge and then subdivide it, go back to vertex mode, and then kind of you know, tweak it a little bit there. And again on this edge so we could go here and subdivide go back into vertex mode and then tweak this one however you think you need to move it and so on and so on and so on and just keep doing that until it gets um you know what you're kind of looking for so we'll come out of x-ray mode let's go back into object mode uh, so i'm not going to spend too long doing this i just wanted to kind of give an idea of how potentially you could you know um use your map dem to help create uh, water planes for larger scale maps so what I'm going to do once I've got to that point I'm going to right click and set my origin to the center mass surface um, and if I actually bring up the move gizmo here you can see it's put it over here and the reason why I do that is because you will need to scale this up to fit the the um, map in the giants editor because this is not um, you know to scale uh, so you know, the, the actual terrain surface is not to scale of the actual map so by putting it here when i press s and scale it it's going to scale correctly in my opinion at least um, and make it easier to uh, make it fit where it needs to fit on the map so <clears throat> next thing we need to do then is give uh, this a name so you can call it whatever you want so i'm just going to call this uh, water plane canyon and then <clears throat> this is your object data. So basically that's the name that we have up here. And then we have mesh data. And this is where we need to update that. So all we need to do here is this is our object. If you look at the symbol here, it matches this symbol. So it's showing my 
uh, object data and my mesh data and they don't match so here i can just take the object data drag it and paste it directly into here like so so that they both match okay you could do the same up here if i expand this so if i actually go back you can see that we've got the same uh information here so you can either you can do it there as well but up here you would have to actually double click it and then type it in which is why i always do it here because it's just a quick drag and drop and it updates it so you know i don't have to do a lot of copy and pasting because it's doing it for me so i find that much easier to do um so next thing we're going to do is give it a material so we're going to come down to the material properties and just give it a material if you don't have one here already you just click new and it will create one whichever you choose to do and then you just name it so we'll just call it um let's see uh well i could call it the same thing but i guess yeah why not let's just call it um water plane Canyon underscore mat. Okay. So <clears throat> once you've got to this part, then we need to actually unwrap the water plane because um, th there's going to be a texture applied to this. Uh, and if you wanted to um, actually have a flow map, you will need to have it unwrapped for that flow map to work correctly. So next thing what we're going to do then is um, open up the UV editor. Now I'm going to do it my way with the add-ons because I, I don't like this. Uh, I know it seems silly, but uh, I've got other methods. I've got add-ons. So for you guys who don't have like um, hard ops, mesh tools, stuff like that, you can go into UV editing and do it this way, uh, which uh, if you prefer, or if you know another method, use that instead. But for me, I'm just going to use my pop-out here um, for the UV editor. So I'm just going to click this, and I find this much cleaner than this but uh, you know it is what it is um so again we're going to go into edit mode a to select everything and currently if we look at the uv editor when there's nothing being displayed but the actual uv if i press a here is right down here that's our uv map which is useless so what i would do is go into uh, again seven on pad in your viewport to go into top down orthographic and then do u and project from view bounds and you'll get this and that will be basically um, what you need to do to get that to work properly uh, <clears throat> and that that kind of generally you know fits nicely and it's going to give us a nice and it, one thing to take note of here the actual uv uh, islands need to be within the grid okay you can't have them outside like this or at least i don't think you can um, you could try that and see if it works but uh, the way I've always done it is to keep within the grid. So now that we've done that, I'm going to close that down and we have our water plane and everything else. Again, you just check your rotation and scale, make sure that they're all uniform and all doing what they need to be doing, and that should be fine. Um, <clears throat> and I think we should be pretty good, you know, where we are there. Uh, so I'm just going to basically export this out now. So I'm just going to take the name from here, copy that, um uh the other thing i want to point out is and you may experience difference that you know your experience may differ somewhat but uh, i'm using the, the official giants i3d exporter and this was created for the uh 2.93 long-term service or long-term support version of blender so i've got 2.93.9 um and i have found in later versions of blender 3.0 and up that certain things here don't work on the export so um, again you may find that they work for you and that's great if they do but uh, when I was doing some animations and skin weights and stuff like that um, if I use 3.3.1 uh, I think it is this one 3.3.1 uh, things didn't work quite the way they were supposed to work um, and I got a lot of problems so my recommendation when you're doing anything for farming simulator is to use 2.93.9 or at least farming simulator 22 uh, if you're using the official giants i3d exporter from the giants developer network um, but again like i say if if you're using a later version of blender and it works for you have at it go for it um, but uh, one thing i don't want to do is spend six hours modeling something in a later version of blender and then i can't export it in an i3d because 
uh, it doesn't work. Um, and, and there are significant Python coding differences between 2.93 and version 3 and up. Um, I think that they add in geometry nodes and things like that, that they are no longer compatible. So if you try to load um, a, a model that you've created in uh, 2.93, or 3.0 and you tried to load them in the alternative version so if i was to create something in 3.3.1 and then try and load it into 2.93.9 it may load but it will give me this big error down the bottom saying that it was created in a later version of blender and there may be some issues or maybe some problems or something like that so missing parts i think it says or something like that um <clears throat> and that could be a problem so you know just just a, a note um, that you may want to uh, be aware of anyway so we're going to export this out everything here I'm just going to leave as default I'm going to um, um, change this though because I don't want to use the blend file name or blender file name so I'm just going to uncheck that and then here I'm going to click on my browse button here go to my desktop and we're just going to basically paste the name in here Hit enter so water plane canyon and I'm going to set my O3D file so it'll say change file location extension from and then to i3d and we're just going to export this so with the plane selected we are going to export selected okay so we're just going to click export selected and then we should be good to go so we now have the water plane um, on the desktop so I'm just going to open that in the Giants editor here <clears throat> And we have our water plane so fantastic no errors that i can see so far and like i said before because the way i created created this the triangulation is nice and kind of you know uh, even in places and whatever else uh, you may find that you might need to increase that um you know to get a better kind of uh, um water flow or whatever else if you're using the flow map more verts might be required to create more edges and so on and so forth but uh, generally speaking, I wouldn't go too too mental because you don't want to have this as you know something really really high poly. It's just a water plane at the end of the day. Um, so thirty triangles in this case is is uh, I think in my opinion more than adequate. But you may find that you want to increase that. Uh, so do so if it if it you know makes it better. Um, then you know you might need to do that. But anyway, so <clears throat> what I'm going to do here then is I'm going to add in some uh, parts here now. I know that uh, as far as albedo color, the, wa the uh, water plane is 1, 1, and 1, and my smoothness and metalness is 1 and 1 as well. Now, one thing I have found uh, is when I actually import this into the map, um, because the too many parts uh, match, the actual material name gets renamed to uh, match what is already on the map, another water plane. So what I would recommend potentially is to not do that, uh, not change these numbers, keep them something different from anything else that you may already have water plane wise in the map, simply because you don't, you want to keep this, uh, you know, it is, the problem is, is once they, once it gets converted to match all of the other water planes, if you then start to change things like add a, a flow map to this water plane, every other water plane on the map that shares that material will now have a, a flow map on it because they will all be sharing the same material um, and then they will all be sharing the same custom shader parameters and variations and you may not want to have that water flow map on every single water uh, water plane that you have in the map um, so you want to kind of work out which water planes you do and which ones you don't um, and then kind of try and work it out from there uh, and you keep and keep your materials um, on each of those individual water planes separate from each other so that they are individually controlled uh, so that you know you can change them um, individually singly whatever you want to call it uh, so I generally kind of change these you know to something that isn't um, the same as what I might already have on the map um, now once you've imported it into the map uh, uh, you can then and save the map then you can do you can change these all you want because it will have updated the i3d and uh, created the new material so then you can change them to your heart's content do what you want with them um, but uh, on the import process you need to make sure that 
these are different to what you may already have on the map itself. Um, so anyway, we're going to add a normal map. So we're going to click here. And I know that that is on my D drive. In Farm Sim 22, data, maps, maps US or map US textures. And then down the bottom here somewhere, there's this water underscore normal DDS. So I'm going to click that, click OK. <clears throat> and you can see it's already started to change a little bit and give this deformation kind of effect with the normal map. And that's going to you know, represent the water, um, you know, and so on. Uh, and then we're going to add in a custom shader. So we're going to come down here, click the um, open or new button to load in our shader. And we want the ocean shader, this one here. So I'm going to double click that and everything will go black. Don't worry about it. <clears throat> We're going to fix that next. So the next thing we want to do then is save this. So I'm going to save it and close it. And the reason why it does that is because there's missing information within this i3D. So <clears throat> and there may be a way to do that um, other than doing it this way. But I'm going to uh, right click and then edit the i3D with Notepad++, which will give me this. And then what I'm going to do is actually go into the map where I know that there are other water planes or potentially you could do this uh, with a default map. So go into wherever you've got FarmSim 22 installed, go to here, uh, maps, map US, right click on the i3D, open with Notepad++ or whatever text editor you may be using. <clears throat> and then we'll give that a sec to load in. Now I already know that if I go control F to bring up my find window, the material I'm looking for is water flow. So if I click find next, it's going to go to here. And you can see here we have this reflection and refraction map information. Mine does not have that currently. So I need to copy that information. So I'm just going to uh, click and shift click to highlight those two lines and then control C to copy them. Come over here under my normal map file ID press enter to create a new line and then paste that information in click save and now I can close both of those down <clears throat> and then I can actually close that one as well and then I'm going to reopen the uh, my new water plane in the editor and we should see now that the water plane actually looks like a water plane so if I click here you can see now if I zoom into this it actually gives the effect of water doesn't show up very well possibly on uh, YouTube, but uh, it now looks more like a water plane. It's not blacked out like it was before. And it's just because that refraction and reflection information is not there and needs to be added in manually. Again, there may be, a, may be a way to do that in here under the attributes or something. I need to look into that, but uh, so it actually adds it on the export, but I just find it as easy to do it in uh, Notepad++ afterwards. Uh, once it's exported to an i3d is to try and find it in there and it not work or whatever else just the way i tend to do it so we're going to come down to the custom shader i'm going to change this to flow map because i would actually like to have this as a flow map it's quite a large lake whatever you want to call it river so i'd actually like to see it flowing through the map so i'm going to go to flow map and it all looks like it's broken again and that's because we need to come down to our custom texture zero and add in our flow map so again, we're going to go to the browse window here and in the same place I was before. So we go back to Farmsim 22 data maps, map US uh, textures, and then come down the bottom here somewhere. You should be able to find, if I recall, water plain creek flow map. So we're going to double click that and load that in. And now you'll see that it actually brings back the water plane. Might be a bit difficult to see, but if I click play, I don't know if we can actually see this until I maybe get it in the map. Yeah, you can just about see it there. You can see the water is actually flowing. OK, hopefully that shows up in uh, on YouTube, but uh, it will show up a bit better once we get it into the map itself. So now you can actually see the water is flowing. So we click stop and it stops flowing. OK, so now we have all of these values set up. We can go ahead and click save again. Um, and now we can basically bring this into uh, into the map so we're going to close that down <clears throat> go to the map here um, like I said before there are several water planes on this map so if I type in here possibly water plane and go to one of these so let's try this one for example so this is actually water underscore mat and you can see it has 
an albedo color of one one and one and a smoothness of one and one has the normal map on it and everything else i uh, don't know what this has as custom shader wise yeah so this just has a custom shader with no flow map um so if i actually do that press f to focus it's this one here basically um <clears throat> And I'm sure if I went to one of the other ones here, so if I go to this one, this doesn't have a flow map on it either. It's just a static pond. So potentially that wouldn't have a flow map on it because it's not, it's just a static kind of uh, um, pond. It's not a river, it doesn't flow. Okay. So, you know, but uh, possibly the waterfall might have, yeah, that's got flow map on it. And that one is actually called some weird name, Fong Tu. <laughs> anyway, so that is this one here so if I was to come into here for example potentially if I now click play you can see the water is all flowing down the down the rocks because it has a flow map on it okay so yeah there's um, <clears throat> you need to make sure that the uh, material is specific to the water plane that you're um, creating and it doesn't get overridden when you import it into the map because like I say if it starts to change it to all the others so when I bring this in if it automatically changes it to water underscore map for the material um, and I want to have a flow map on it uh, as soon as I start changing that one every other water plane on the map is now going to have a flow map and they may not I may not want them to have a flow map so you know you need to make sure that obviously that's uh, not going to cause any issues there so let's close that so we're going to try what see what happens so what i'm going to do is actually save the map here okay so i've saved the map that should update the i3d and everything else um and you know we should now be able to import our water plane now i'm going to just do file uh, import if i go to my desktop here and then find the water plane so just go double click on this and then fingers crossed that the water plane material stays what it was before and it does water plane canyon underscore mat and that's because i kept these numbers what they were when they were exported from the giants editor and i didn't change them to match what was already on the map itself very important so you need to go through all of the other water planes and see what they are and then make sure that the albedo color and the smoothness and metalness are different to any other water plane on the map if you want this to be a standalone uh, water plane that isn't controlled by any other water plane on the map at all because as i say as soon as you import it and it updates the material name to match what water plane you may already have on the map then when you make any changes to this one it will update all of the other water planes on the map as well and you may not want to have flow maps on those but you want to have a flow map on this one so just just bear that in mind um, okay so now that we have it in the map we need to obviously make some changes here so i'm just going to drag this up now this is tiny again as i said before um, <clears throat> when i created this in blender uh, the scale of this is nothing like the scale of this map here they are not not uh, you know there's no um, they're not the same basically so this one i need to now scale up to make it fit uh, that is the only downside of doing it this way but it's not an impossible task it can be done so again you need to kind of just play around here so i'm going to do maybe 200 on the x 200 on the y, uh, z and then we'll just take a look at that and see what it looks like so we're just gonna zoom out a little bit still a bit too um small so again we're going to do maybe i don't know if we jump to 400 by 400 maybe something like that that might be still a little bit too small so what i'm going to do here then is i'm just going to position myself here and drag this down and kind of bring it over a little bit into position where i want it to be i was close to so we'll just do something like this bring it down a little bit further and maybe back this way a bit more Let's just kind of get it somewhere around about right so maybe i might go to uh 
420 by 420. Let's try that, see what that looks like. So we'll just kind of move this somewhere into position here. I do go down a little bit on the Z axis. Let's do maybe 75. Let's try that, see what that looks like. Let's just come in a little bit here. So now obviously the way I've created this water plane, it goes off the map. Um, so you would have to have either make it go to the end of the map when you create it in Blender, um, or you would have to kind of put something here to mask this, or you would have to have an area here that this water plane goes into another water plane. So it looks like the river's flowing into a larger lake or something like that. But that's something for you to work out on your particular map and your design that you want to create. Uh, this is just a method that I kind of figured might be, uh, you know, helpful on creating water planes for larger scale maps um, where it's not possible to export the terrain uh, out of the editor and into Blender and do it the way I did it before because it's just not not possible to work with that kind of scale. Um, So something like that, maybe I might uh, decrease this to maybe 415 by 415. And again, you know, just kind of position it again. Maybe, uh, you know, this is the part where you'd have to just kind of play around with it and um, see if you can actually get it to uh, fit where you want it to fit. So, uh, and for navigation in Blender, uh, uh, sorry, in the Giants editor, just so you can, maybe if you don't know, I hold down left alt and then <clears throat> my left mouse button is to rotate my right mouse button is to zoom and my middle mouse button is to pan okay but and that works quite well for me uh, but uh, there are times especially when you're on a 16x map or bigger that trying to navigate across the map doing you know this sort of nonsense can be really uh, by holding down um, left alt and then you know uh, right mouse button clicking to try and drag across the uh, the map can be a bit um, of a pain so the alternative method is to hold down the right mouse button and then you can pan and then use the w a s and d or whatever else so w a s d the w for forward a for left d for right and then s for back and if you hold down shift and then w it will make it go far, go faster so if you hold down shift and then press any of the wasd keys it will move at a greater speed so that can be a better way of getting around the map if it's a much larger map that you're working with uh, but for the most part when i'm in close like this for example i will just use the left alt and then the left mouse button to pan right mouse button to zoom and middle mouse button to pan this way so sorry did i say that right <laughs> i don't know um so left alt and left mouse button to rotate left alt and right mouse button to zoom left alt and middle mouse button to pan okay <laughs> enough of that so yeah now we've got our water plane in the map and it has got its own material so it's going to be uh, it won't interfere with any of the other water planes on the map and everything else and you can see it actually does look like water which is good and if i click play we will see it has a flow map on it so the water is actually flowing fantastic so you can see it's all flowing okay um, and that's pretty much how i go about creating water planes for larger scale maps um, i think it works really well and the last thing i would do just before kind of uh, completion is to reset the scale you don't want it to basically have this scale simply because uh what i tend to find is if you have it like this um it can stretch the textures so what i do is come up here go to edit and then freeze and don't want to do translate we just want to do scale so we're just going to click on scale preserve instances and click apply and then it will put it all back to one one and one might not make any difference but i prefer to do that and not have it at the uh, you know um, non-uniform scaling. So put it all back to one, one, and one, and then you might find that that will actually make it look better. It might not make a damn difference, 
but in my opinion it's worth doing that um, but I think that that looks pretty dang good uh, you know we now have the water plane on the map with all of the flow map and everything all working as intended and uh, you know I think it just makes makes it look better um, and all that sort of stuff so yeah uh, you know and then obviously yeah that is pretty much that so there's a few things to obviously take into take note of there um, you know uh, don't want to make this a massively long video but just to go over it again very very quickly uh, create your um, single plane you know so just uh, add mesh plane and then subdivide it so right click and subdivide so if I go to here right click maybe, maybe not there so we need to be in edit mode actually I, I don't want to go over it again hopefully I've shown what I've done in the video there or what I've done in the video I've shown how to do it um, you know you can watch it as many times as you need to to understand that um, and then yeah go through all the motions uh, and then you know create your material and all that sort of stuff using the modifiers on this so we've got uh, our, our subdivision uh, under simple as many subdivisions as your system will handle it, it you know the more the better it will give you a better uh, representation of the actual map layout um, in, in, important note uh, just to go over this when you add in your map DEM make sure you change it from um, sRGB to non-color okay you might also find that linear works as well but I just do long non-color it tends to work quite well um, and then you know add in your subdivisions make sure that your subdivision is first uh, the subdivision needs to be the uh, on the top of the stack because basically we want to subdivide the mesh and then displace it so the way the stack works here for modifiers it goes from top to bottom so subdivision first then displace it if you do it the other way around you're displacing the mesh and then you're trying to subdivide the displacement and that's not going to work uh, so you want to subdivide the mesh first and then displace it okay um, so add in your texture and then <clears throat> here you want to change it from uh, local coordinates to UV and load in your texture that you just create you know, add it in here so just click and add in your texture um, and you need to then kind of play around with some parts here so you might need to increase or decrease the strength I generally leave them at default here because the map DEM is doing all the work so I find that you know just having it on that is fine and again you are only using this as a reference uh, so as long as it looks um, you know close enough to what you've got in in the Giants editor I think you should be okay to go there um, name your water plane uh, you know create your material um, and na name your material uh, and all that sort of stuff and uh, yeah once you're happy with it and you've got it where you need to be make sure your rotation and scale are applied uh, so they're not all over the place um, and make sure that uh, your origin points so again right click with your plane selected origin center of mass and that just makes it easier in my opinion when you need to scale and move it on the um, in the Giants editor uh, if it's off onto one side or if the origin points over here somewhere it just makes it really awkward to do anything with it so you want it to be kind of you know central to the actual uh, object that you're trying to work on um, yeah and then once you've exported it out uh, open it up in a separate window um, like I showed before open it up in a separate window a separate Giants editor session and then add in your normal map and your custom shader save it and then edit it in notepad plus plus Add in your refraction and reflection information that you can get from any water plane on the uh, uh, default maps like I showed. Just add in that information, save this, and then reopen it again. Make sure that everything is okay. Uh, and you don't have any errors in your console. So if you open up the anything and you have any errors in here, make sure you fix those first before going forward. Um, and uh, yeah, and then you can, once you've done all of that, uh, you can add in your flow maps and whatever else that you need to add in um, and so on and so forth and uh, one last thing uh, UV map very important otherwise the textures won't display correctly and the flow map won't work right so you know again like I did before 7 on unpad to go into top orthographic or view and viewpoint top 
if the 700 numpad doesn't work or you don't have a numpad and then just go you project view from bound or project from view bounds and you'll get this uh, you might want to experiment with having the uvs outside of the grid but uh, looking at any of the in-game um, default warp planes they are all contained within the grid but uh, you can try and scale them outside and see if that works um, i've not done it myself but uh, uh, you can have a play with that and see if it uh, does makes a difference i don't know but personally i think this looks pretty good and all the flow map works and everything so you know that's the way i have been doing it and i think it works quite well i'm sure wizard thanks very much for watching i'll catch you on the next one